Hey guys, welcome to your next advanced C++ and graphics tutorial video. Today what we're going to do is optimize our Sprite Batch class uh, because it's not doing, you know, the best that it could. Uh, one of the issues with our Sprite Batch class is it's constantly calling new and delete. Uh, whenever we call SpriteBatch.draw, every time we make a new glyph, we call new glyph. And the problem with the new call is it's actually kind of slow. Uh, it has to allocate new memory on the heap. Uh, it's also going to kind of fragment your memory a little bit. Uh, and we have to later, of course, delete that memory too, which is also not very fast. It's usually much better to allocate memory uh, in batches instead of uh, allocating a bunch of small things one at a time with new and delete. That makes it really, really slow. And the way we can do that is instead of using new and delete, what we can do is have sort of a just a static buffer of memory uh, used for glyphs that gets bigger and smaller, uh, but we reuse that same memory. And we're going to use a vector for that. Uh, so first, uh, let's go ahead and benchmark ourselves a little bit. I actually have already implemented this, and I uh, just, just to test it out to make sure that it would indeed uh, be beneficial. And it actually increased my FPS by two times. Uh, so I have a new level.txt uh, file. Uh, you can download this in the description. Uh, it's a much bigger level, and it holds 1,000 humans. Uh, so let's go ahead and run it and see how it performs uh, in release mode uh, with OBS running. We'll probably get capped. Uh, yeah, we're going to get like 15 FPS. All right, so we're getting 15 frames per second uh, with OBS running. I believe it was about 90 without OBS whenever I was running it. Uh, but uh, as you can see, there's a lot more people running around. Uh, there is a lot of uh, CPU limitation here, but we are also bound by the GPU a little bit, uh, meaning uh, we could optimize our graphics a bit. And the zombie horde is going crazy. Uh, we don't even have the firepower to stop this, <laughs> unfortunately. We'll have to make some new guns later for sure. Uh, all right, so uh, we're at 15 frames per second. Let's see what we can do about it. So when we go to spritebatch.h, right now we have this std vector of glyph star glyphs. Now, the reason we are using glyph pointers and the reason we didn't just use uh, just a static glyph objects like this uh, is because whenever we go to sort it, we have to sort the memory that is in this vector. And a glyph pointer is going to be 4 bytes or 8 bytes, depending on if you're a 32-bit or a 64-bit machine. However, if we wanted to sort glyphs instead of glyph pointers, then we would have to sort a lot more bytes. If we go to the glyph, we'll see it has four vertexes. It has a GLU int. It has a float. Uh, we're, we're getting many, many bytes here, and each vertex has a lot of bytes in it, too. Uh, so having to sort that means we're going to be copying around a lot of memory, and it's just it's really expensive. However, if we do use an, a vector of glyphs like this, then instead of calling new and delete, we can just call vector pushback. Uh, and then whenever we actually uh, clear the vector, uh, like if you call glyphs.clear, uh, say you want to make it empty again, it's not actually going to free the memory. On the inside, it is calling new and delete, but it's doing so in a smart way. Instead of calling new and delete on every single glyph, it's calling new and delete on an array of glyphs, which is a much, much more efficient. When you call clear, it doesn't actually get rid of that array. It keeps that array in uh, memory. Uh, so whenever you go to call pushback later, it doesn't have to call new and delete at all. It's a really, really convenient data structure. And it's going to speed up our program a lot, but we still want to have fast sorting. So the solution is to have two vectors. We have a vector of glyphs, which are going to be just glyphs like this. And then we're going to have a vector of glyph pointers. And the glyph pointers are what we're going to sort. Uh, and each glyph pointer is going to point to one of the glyphs. So that gives us the best of both worlds. All of our pointers are pointing to array that is, it's pointing to an array of memory. Uh, having an array of memory is much better than a bunch of random uh, heap allocated new things, uh, or uh, things allocated by new, uh, because whenever you go to traverse those, you're going to get what's called cache thrashing. You're going to be uh, jumping around in random places in memory trying to access all those different glyphs and it's going to slow down your program. However, with a vector of glyphs, all of them are right next to each other in memory, so when we go to sort uh, the pointers and all that, every time we access glyph memory, it's always going to be really close together and this is what's going to give us uh, better cache performance. And I haven't really talked about the cache a lot, but just know that having a contiguous data structure, meaning an array or vector, not a list, not something that's connected by pointers, that's usually going to increase your performance just because of the cache. All right, so let's have our second array, std vector, uh, and we'll say glyph star, and this is going to be glyph, uh, glyph, such a weird word, glyph pointers, if I can spell it right. So let's put a little comment here. This is for sorting. Uh, these are the actual glyphs. All right, so now we need to make some changes. If we go to Sprite Bash, we're going to get a whole bunch of errors here. So here, uh, let's go ahead and start with what happens when we uh, 
call sprite batch draw. So sprite batch draw is supposed to make a new glyph and add it to our glyphs array. Uh, but now our glyphs is no longer an array of pointers. So instead of having a glyph star new glyph allocated by new, we're going to have just a glyph new glyph like this. And then instead of glyph arrow texture new glyph arrow depth, we're going to say uh, new glyph dot texture new glyph dot depth. And then down here, when we call glyphs.pushback, uh, it isn't going to give us an error because we are correctly pushing back uh, a non a, a, a actual instance of a glyph rather than a pointer to an instance of a glyph. Now, there is one inefficiency here. What we're doing here is we're allocating a glyph on the stack. This is going to get that memory, and then we're going to set up all this stuff. We're going to copy all this data to it. And then right here, when we call pushback, we're going to copy all that data again, so it's extra copies. We're going to actually do an intermediate copy that is a waste of time. Now, it's not a really big deal, but we could easily optimize this so we don't have to do this intermediate copy by using a constructor in glyph with the uh, in place back function for the vector. So let's go ahead and do that. And what the, what the constructor for glyph is going to do is pretty much the exact same thing that we are doing here. We're just going to grab all of this, and we're going to pretty much pass in these exact same parameters that are up here. So let's go to glyph. All right, and since it's uh, going to be a little bit more complicated, uh, let's go ahead and we could keep this as a struct, but let's just call it a class. I've actually found that it's better to just make everything into a class. Now remember, a class with the public keyword uh, right here is the same as a struct. And the reason I like to always make everything into a class, because if later uh, you have, uh, say, a struct that you want to do a forward declaration for. If you forget that it's a struct and you forward declare it with class, you're going to get a really hard to find uh, bug. Uh, so we've made it a public class. Now let's give it, uh, we'll give it two constructors. We'll get a default constructor that takes no arguments and it does nothing. There we go. So we're just going to implement it with nothing. And then we're going to have a constructor that does take arguments uh, that does this, that sets up all of the uh, parameters. And this is what we're going to use with in placeback, so we don't have to do that intermediate copy. So we're going to have to get rid of all this. A little trick, so we're not manually deleting all that. We can just type in, uh, we can type Control F to do find and replace. Uh, click this arrow here. And we're going to find new glyph arrow, and we're going to replace it with nothing. Just hit backspace, and then hit replace all. Make sure selection is selected. You don't want to replace it all in your entire solution. Notice I've highlighted all of this, so this is where I want to change it. And hit that, and then it'll... Uh, get rid of all of those for us. Okay, so now we need to pass in the, per the same parameters that we are getting passed in in the draw function. So I'm going to copy all of these and dump them right here. Okay, and so we have a little bit of uh, naming conflicts here. Texture equals texture, that's not good. So we should do something like capitalize these. That's fine. We'll capitalize texture and we'll capitalize depth. Uh, and that's good. So now lowercase texture equals uppercase texture. Uh, lowercase depth equals uppercase depth, and to be slightly even more efficient, uh, we can use an initializer list. So it will say texture, texture, and we'll say depth, depth. An initializer list is slightly faster than doing the assignment. It doesn't even really matter, but it's just a good practice. All right, so there's our initializer list. Hopefully you remember the syntax for that. And the rest of these cannot be uh, set up with an initializer list, unless we want to give them constructors, but th this is fine. This is perfectly fine. We've already saved a whole bunch of copies. So now all we got to do here in the draw function is we can actually get rid of all of this. There's just going to be one line of code. We're going to call dot in place back. And we're going to copy all these parameters in there. So we're going to say dest rect, uv rect, texture, depth, color. Look at that. Look at how much simpler this function got. And this is going to be faster, too. All right, so now we are emplacing back all of our glyphs. Uh, what do we need to do with sorting? Well, let's go to, uh, where is it? Uh, where do we sort? It's spritebatch.end. So here we call sort glyphs and then create render batches. So when we sort the glyphs, uh, it's actually going to be sorting using glyphs.begin glyphs.end. But what we want to do is actually sort with, uh, here's spritebatch.h. We want to sort with glyph pointers. Because remember, sorting these four or eight byte pointers is going to be a lot faster than sorting the actual glyphs. So glyph pointers.begin, glyph pointers.end. Same for these. There we go. Okay, so now our sort glyphs is good, but we need to actually set up glyph pointers. We never did that. So in sprite batch.end, that's what we're going to do. We're going to say glyph pointers uh, dot resize. And what resize is going to do is set the size of glyph pointers, and we're going to set it equal to glyphs.size. 
So that will set the correct size. Now we need to point all of the glyph pointers to all of the glyphs. So we're going to say for int i equals 0, i is less than glyphs dot size i plus plus. All right. Set up all pointers for fast sorting. There we go. And all we got to do is say glyph pointers i equals the address of glyphs i. So we're just pointing all these pointers to those glyphs so that we can sort them. And then sort glyphs is going to sort those pointers. Really, really simple. So now we don't need to call delete on the glyphs anymore. So we can get rid of that. And there's one last thing we need to do down here. Uh, we have, uh, we're looping through glyphs. This should actually be glyph pointers. So what I'm going to do is highlight all of this. It, what is it? Glyph pointers. Yep. Control F. And we're going to re rename that to glyph, or sorry, first you got to type glyphs, and we're going to replace glyphs with glyph pointers. Now make sure you are uh, have the selection uh, mode selected. Don't, and don't do entire solution or anything like that, and make sure you've only selected what you want to replace. So replace all. There we go. That fixed that, and I believe I missed one here. Yep, glyphs pointers and glyph pointers. All right. I think we're done. Uh, let's go ahead and run it and see what happens. So we were getting 15 frames per second. We might still get that because of OBS, but I think we should get at least 30. We're about to find out. I'm hopeful. All right, we are getting 15 FPS still, unfortunately, but I do assure you that it is much more efficient. Uh, did we actually clear glyphs? We did clear glyphs. Okay, good. All right, so that is that optimization. Now, I unfortunately wasn't able to show you the benefit of it on camera, but I assure you that it is definitely faster, it's definitely more efficient, it's more cache coherent, and it's it's just all around better. Uh, so be sure to implement that in your game. Uh, let me know if it gives you a little uh, speed boost. It probably won't give you a huge speed boost because we are mainly CPU limited right now, I believe, uh, but it should give you something. All right, see you next time, guys.